Hello beer tubers and welcome to another beer review with me Peter the Master of Profits today checking out a brewery I haven't revisited in a very 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 long time. Hoppin' Frog. So Hoppin' Frog is one of those OG American breweries that I've always loved. Um, I've reviewed so many of their beers over the years and I've got to meet Fred uh, quite a few times. Uh, actually Fred is in a video we're tasting Terrapin, Terrapin Wake and Bake, one of the variants. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, it was, you know, one of those breweries that really helped me, you know, form my interest in American beer way back in the day. Before I started the channel and everything, I think one of my, my first ever American double IPA was Mean Manalishi, uh, actually, that I bought at Urkensoil, which I ended up uh, working in as well. But a, a series of beer from Hop and Frog I've always had a near and dear to my heart is the Boris series. Boris, Doris, Taurus, and then this one. Quorus. I have never had Quorus. And I saw this and I was like, I need to do a video on that because I've done all the other ones, uh, the base version at least. There's a few different barrel aged versions and, and, and different tweaks on the different variants of Boris. But it's a great beer. And the whole reason, the fun thing with Boris is like they did Doris and Taurus and all this. And all this has, has to do with Fred actually fighting for legalizing higher gravity beers being produced in the state of Ohio so that you could actually make beers that were like 15% like this one. And because back in the day, legislations were stating that you could only do beers, I think it was around 10 or below maybe even, or was it nine? I can't remember the exact number. Fred definitely does because <laughs> he's really preached it. But he had was a big part of having this leg legislation changed, giving brewers a whole lot more freedom in creating crazy big beers. So Quaris is their quadruple imperial stout, and this is the biggest of all the Boris variants. Uh, what's interesting with this, and they call this, they all, I think Boris is Bodesh's oatmeal Russian imperial stout, and then there's Doris, which is double oatmeal Russian imperial stout, and Taurus, which is triple oatmeal Russian imperial stout. And then there, there, there is this one, Quaris, which is quadruple oatmeal Russian style imperial stout. So it says that this one, uh, you know, is super extreme and big and supercharged and everything. But then the interesting thing, it's dry hopped and first word hopped with American hops. This is not a fresh can, so you probably not taste exactly like big hoppiness. But back in the day, American stouts were really hoppy. They were not <coughs> big fudge bombs. They had those flavors, but they were quite hop centric. So yeah, let's check what this one out. I'm, I'm really excited about this one. So uh, really thick and rich and pitch black. It leaves really, really dark brown curtains on the side of the glass. Look at that. And I love the format, 25 centiliters. Perfect for a beer like this. Or 8.45 fluid ounces. It's kind of like the cans you get on airplanes when you, you get soda. Uh, but yeah, it's just so pitch black. When I poured it out, it had a really rich, dark, roasty looking, uh, like really dark brown head. It looks very nice. It looks like a big, rich beer. Let's check out the aroma. Oh, it smells really big and really rich and really, really old school. Like really old school, heavily roasted American Imperial stuff. There's so much deep roasty malt and big umami. Almost like a um, Marmite type umaminess or something. Or like almost, I've, I've heard that people say that sometimes, but like charred or beef broth. There's almost something, like if you ever like stock cubes, beef stock cubes, there's almost something like that. Like a rich umami, and you can smell that this has been a hoppy beer, because there's a, there's definitely a, like almost like a fruity floral hop thing sticking around still. You definitely smell it's been hoppy. Licorice, charred, roasted wood, ashy wood. There's a little bit of a, like an oxidative dark fruit thing, so maybe this can is not like, maybe it's, I don't know, it says it's best before 2000 and 23, so maybe, I'm, I'm sure they give this more than a year, but it's also a long time since this arrived in Denmark. I just was late to the party. Yeah, huge, huge stuff. Really dark fruity, actually, right now. Like, almost like a grape thing. Dried grapes or something like that, aka raisins. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there's even hints of smoke. There is a little touch of like a phenolic spice, maybe black pepper or something. Or that could just be spice for balls even. But yeah, huge roast bomb. Big, charry, roasty, burnt, burnt coffee, tar, ashy, 
like how I remember old school Imperial stops. It's funny because a lot of brewers are going this way again now. Like a lot of brewers are missing beers that were like this and not just like fudge bombs. So like I've had a few beers that's been going to this style and it seems like also this is kind of like the style they're doing at least with the one beer head at Holy Goat. But it's a warm welcome because beers like this are awesome but they just need a lot of time to mellow out uh, to be you know really outstanding like really fresh they're crazy almost undrinkable but then with time they turn into this it smells really good it smells awesome let's try it and really old money cheers humongous wowzers really roasty a wowzers <laughs> rare i use that term 15.7%. So roasty. It just keeps going down. Laughter. Like huge bitterness. Huge roastiness. It's almost like um, espresso, like chewing on espresso beans type, like bitter roast. It's crazy. Like really dark roast espresso. Some acidity as well from like roasted malt. And some sweetness. But it's nowhere near as sweet as I expected. And it's actually quite dry. Like it's it's a fairly dry beer, especially like it just finished like dry and bitter in the mouth. Sticky on the lips, like it leaves the sticky gloss. It's, this is such an old school like American style imperial style compared to what's hyped and what not, not like nowadays. But this is a whole lot more dense than than <coughs> than Boris and Doris and and Taurus. I feel like it's also drier, and I also feel like it's a little bit less uh, full-bodied compared to like something like Taurus. But I think it's because alcohol really dries out as well, and like that's a big part of it. So it's like it's it's a really dry, roasty finish. It's not like Mickler Black dry, but it's you know it's just a much more dry, big ABV Imperial stout. But huge bold flavors, huge roasted malt character, burnt coffee, burnt wood, ashy taste. There's like almost like burnt caramel, uh, like like heavy char. It's got loads of umami, that like beef brothy thing. Loads of bitter, just like like <coughs> leafy bitter hop flavor. And there's almost like just like a little bit of a generic fruitiness for a. a Bit there and then it just fades into a like crazy intense like roast profile. It's not boozy at all, which is really impressive for almost 16%. It's uh, a really easy drinking beer for its ABV. I threw this in the fridge for about 20 minutes before the review, which is perfect. Um, yeah, it's almost 16%, but it's just like it's so easily drinkable, it's scary. It's a really intense over the top imperial stout. It's crazy old school American imperial stout with big bold flavors and big roasty malt and big bitterness and everything. It's really fucking great. Um, but I do think I prefer Taurus over this. I think the ballast in Taurus is a bit better. This is just a bit more crazy and intense. It is an extreme beer. That's what it's trying to be. Not that I think this is too extreme. Like it is a really nice beer and the alcohol is really well hidden, but it's just like it's Maybe a touch too dry for my taste in a beer like this. But that's like the only thing I can put my, put my finger on. It's still really, really good. But it's just personal preference. Like if you love extreme old school American Imperial stuff, you're going to love this. It's definitely miles better than, I mentioned Mickler Black. It's miles better than that. That champagne yeast, it's a whole different thing in terms of dryness and also alcohol as far as I remember. I loved it back in the day, but recently I had one, an old one recently, it was a while back. But it's just like, maybe not as good as I remember. But this, this is really nice. I don't want to put it too much lower than I think I gave uh, Taurus 94. So I think I'll put this at a 93, just like a much lower, maybe a 92. It's a really nice Imperial Stout. It's awesome if you like like old money beers. I just like the Taurus a bit more. I think it has a bit better balance. But that's also like a cr pretty crazy intense beer like really old money, money and really extreme but this is just like <laughs> that even crazier but yeah really good stuff if you guys had a chance to try Quora's the Quasher from Hop and Frog let me know what you thought of it I think it's been like four years or something like that since I lasted a Hop and Frog beer on the channel 
It's also not too often they come over. It's like once in a while sporadically, but that's a brewery I should try and revisit some beer from as well because they make fantastic mm -hmm. beers. So if you guys had this one, let me know what you thought of it. As always, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram. Give this video a thumbs up and join it. Ring the bell for future notifications about videos. And I'm going to say cheers in some crazy intense uh, quadruple oatmeal imperial stout, Russian imperial stout. And see you guys in another beer review.